Have you ever wanted to do a little bit of bow hunting in the Hunter Call of the Wild and you just weren't sure where to start? Today we're going to be doing a bow guide. Today we're going to be focusing on exactly how to use a bow, how to do the stock up, basically everything you need to do to take that trophy down with a bow. We are going to have a look at all seven bows in the game and their differences and we will shoot most of them. Now, let me know in the comments, guys, what your absolute favorite map in the game is. And I am gonna encourage you guys to stick around right to the end of the video. I will share a keyword. Drop that in the comments for your chance to win a one month membership to the channel. And we are gonna head straight into it. So as you can see, I am running around back here and I am not spooking this bison. And the reason for that is when you are 200 meters or more away from any animal, they cannot hear you. You're fine to run. Now, if you shoot a weapon, they will hear that further than 200 meters. So we're we're actually going to start this video by stalking in and taking this bison. We're going to use the Hawk Edge CB70. Now this bow is a non-DLC bow and it is one of my absolute favorites. I use this bow all the time. It has a peak draw weight of 70 pounds. You do have to unlock it as a new player so you can run right up to 200 meters but right around there you want to start walking and if you can you want to always keep eyes on your target. Now as you can see that's not always possible so that means we are going in blind. And I don't like to do that, but sometimes you just have to. Now, if you're going in blind, you're gonna have to be more careful than you normally would because when I am approaching prey, I'm basically watching its emotions for clues for when I should be slowing down. So without seeing him, I am gonna crouch at about 150 meters. And I'll usually crouch all the way in until about 100 meters. And if I can't see them then, then I will go prone. Now, one thing you really need to pay attention to is is your wind direction. Now this is the wind indicator down here in the right hand corner. The open part is where the wind is blowing. So you don't want the open V to be facing your prey because if it is, it's going to smell you way before you can get within range and it is going to spook. So in that case, what you wanna do is come in from a different angle. If you are gonna do a bunch of bow hunting, I would recommend parking your dog, leaving him behind. Now I believe that the dog can spook only certain sizes of animals. They won't spook the big animals so we're probably fine here with bison. I think I heard Jaxi say that they spook up to basically animals around the size of red deer. Only when you get really 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 close to them but that is what we're doing so it's just better to leave your dog behind which I <laughs> did not do. <laughs> but I will in a minute. So you can stop intermittently, get up a little bit, have a peek, still can't see anything. So we're gonna get back down and keep moving. So I would say that getting within range, and I'm gonna get my dog to lay down, is about 60 meters. Now bison are a great target to practice on because they're nice and big. Okay. Well, he definitely is here and he definitely knows that I'm here. Now, if you have any trees around, this is when you wanna grab cover and you can see in the bottom right-hand corner how covered you are. So right now I am perfectly hidden. Problem is I can't see. Beautiful. And we have lots of targets, lots of different bison here that we can shoot at. Okay, so here, this is gonna be our target here. So the first thing you wanna do when you pull out your bow is zero correctly. The most precise way to do this is to spot your animal, open up the map, either put a waypoint on it or just put your arrow on it when you put your arrow on the green circle in the bottom right hand corner it says 52.07 meters that is how far this bison is away from me see and when i spot him it looks more like he's 35 and that difference can make a big difference when you are bow hunting okay so we're going to start with the single pin site this is a non-dlc site so we're just going to aim right at the top of my black tip there i am zeroed for 40 and the same thing like with rifle hunting is you're going to hold your breath and take the shot. What the heck just happened? I'm taking another shot. I hit it. I don't know what happened there. What the heck? Oh, splat. Well, <laughs> we took two down. I think I did better than I thought I did. How you doing, my buddies? So let's see. I should mention that 600 green arrows are extremely powerful. And look at the insane penetration. Now, I did hit him in the skull, which you're not supposed to do. But you can see how powerful these arrows are. It's pretty crazy. So that was a 47 meter shot. And again, I think I shot this one in the rear end and it completely obliterated this bison and went right through it. So I didn't get a vital with either one of these. So 
They're not my best work, but we did get them. So that's not nothing. So that's a compound bow. Now let's use a crossbow. Okay, so now we are in Parque Fernando. And the reason that we're here is I wanted to show you where the short range firing range is in the game. So you want to come here to Parque Fernando. You want to go to the Casita de Merida outpost. And I can actually see the firing range right from the outpost here. So it is literally a three second run over here. And that is where you will find it. So this is where you want to go to practice with a bow. The other firing range, which is in the bottom right hand corner in Hirschfelden, that's where you want to go for longer range practicing. So anytime you are in any of the firing ranges, when you pull out a weapon, you will have this infinity symbol in the bottom right hand corner. What that means is you are not going to use up any of your ammo. You can practice as much as you want and it is not going to cost you any money. So definitely before you go out and bow hunt any trophies, come to the firing range and definitely practice. So this first target here is 15 meters away. The lowest I can zero with most of these bows is 20 meters. So the CB70 here zeroes in at 20, 40, and 60 meters. So I'm going to zero to 20. Now because the target's a little bit closer than 20 meters, I'm going to aim a tiny bit low. And we got a beautiful bullseye. So now a more realistic shot is most of the time you're not going to be 20 meters away from your target. More often than not, you will be 60 meters. So let's try a 60 meter shot. Now, again, you do want to pay attention to the wind because especially from 60 meters, the wind can push your arrow. So on bigger targets, if it pushes the arrow, it's not as big a deal. But on smaller targets, it can be the difference between a vital hit and not making the shot. So here we go. Oh, beautiful. That was another bullseye. So definitely come out here to Parque Fernando and practice before you head out and bow hunt that trophy. Okay, so since we're here in Parque Fernando, I thought we would do some bow hunting for some water buffalo because they are really nice big targets. Oh my gosh, and we are gonna get attacked. No. Well, bows make absolutely fantastic defensive weapons and I think, oh, but maybe it's gonna chicken. Now, hopefully I don't spook the rest of them. I'm gonna move back from them. That's the thing is if you are sneaking up on your target and something aggressive comes after you, they can definitely blow your cover. So what I try to do is get further than 200 meters away. Our herd will still be there, hopefully. So zero down to 20 meters, lead the shot. Yes, I know, dog, I noticed, thank you. I think we got a vital. We got her. So you definitely want to lead the shot on anything that is moving. That means shoot right in front of them because then they will run into your moving arrow. And there we go. That was our shot. Look at the penetration. Not too bad. That was a 3.01 meter shot. Okay, so the question is, did we spook our buffalo? And we did not. They are still there. So that is awesome. We are within 200 meters. So I am going to try and keep my eyes on at least one of these. The seven is perfect because I find females are slower to spook than males are. So we're going to keep an eye on him and we're just going to walk as long as we can. And when he stops being calm, we will start to crouch. Now I am keeping an eye on my wind. The wind is good, pretty decent. So it's not going to spook our water buffalo. Okay, he's attentive. So now I'm going to crouch. He should go back to being calm within a minute or two. And yes, I forgot to put my dog away. So I'm going to get him to lay down. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that bow hunting gives you way less hunting pressure than using any other weapon in the game. It gives you the same reduced hunting pressure as if you were hunting out of any hunting structure. So basically, when you shoot anything with a rifle, when you're not in a hunting stand, you can shoot three animals and the fourth kill will delete your zone. When you're using a bow, you can kill 15 animals and the 16th will delete the zone. Okay, so he's calm. We're at 93 meters. I am now going to go in prone. So I basically, I want to get to between 40 and 60 meters. If I can get even closer than 40, then absolutely great. But we want to be at least 60 meters. Now, if you're a pro, you can definitely take further shots. But when you're learning, I wouldn't recommend it. And definitely not on something important like a great one. Now, when you're coming in prone and you can't see anything, it's okay to stop every once in a while. Just get up a little, have a little quick peek and everything's good and then continue. When you are getting ready to take your shot, if there is anywhere you can take cover, that is what you want to do. But a lot of the trees here in Parquet don't hide you at all. So if you can't find any cover, then what you want to do is stand up right when you're ready to take your shot, get up and take that shot real quick. Sometimes you can stand beside trees and they will give you some cover. You just got to play around and get the area figured out. And if you are going prone in water, once it gets to a certain depth, 
depth, it will force you to go up to the crouch position. Okay, so I've gotten in pretty darn close here. Oh, it's going aggressive. Are you? No, 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 no. Oh, you guys are killing me. Give me an arrow. Give me an arrow. Oh, here we go. We spooked everybody. No. So lead the shot. I don't know if that was a good shot or what. Oh, it was. We got him. Well, that can happen when you are bow hunting. Anything that can go aggressive. But we did get him. What did we get? We got a double lung. Look at that shot. So look at the hunting pressure. Oh, there already was hunting pressure here. But that was from another kill. So you can see the highly reduced hunting pressure from using a bow. Now, before we go any further, we really do need to talk about the archery perks in the game because they are going to have a great effect on your bow hunting. So when we go in here to the archery perks. Now, I don't have a huge amount of perks in here. I do some bow hunting in the game. I don't do an insane amount of bow hunting in the game. So I have put most of my points into rifle hunting. But with what I have here, I don't have a problem. I don't feel like I'm running out of air too quickly or anything like that. But let's have a look. So we have full draw. So with full draw, this increases the time an arrow can be drawn in aim mode before fatigue sets in. Fatigue will cause aim wobble followed by a disruption of aim mode. So I would love to have three points in here. That's going to give me more time to hold up my bow before I have to put it down or shoot it. Then number two here, we have move and shoot. This decreases wobble while moving in aim mode using any weapon. So this you definitely want. That affects every weapon in the game. Then over here, we have increased confidence. This increases the accuracy of all bows when shooting from the hip. Well, I am never going to do any hip firing with a bow. But the reason I put one point in here was to get to this one, which I love to have. This is the Like a Pro bow skill. So this is the one that unlocks the ability to enter aim mode with a bow while prone. So you can lay prone and take any of your shots, not just with the crossbow, but with all the bows in the game when you do have this. And then I don't have either of these. This one is recycled. Basically, this unlocks the ability to retrieve arrows or bolts. And at level two, it decreases the chance that an arrow or bolt will break upon impact and pumping iron. Increased arm strength means more draw length. This increases the kinetic energy of all bows, which in turn means more damage, penetration, and speed using the same arrows. So if you're a heavy duty bow hunter and you wanna bow hunt everything, then you definitely can load up your archery perk points in here. That is what I have and it's been doing great. Okay, so we have a herd of Axis deer here. So we are now going to sneak up and take down an Axis deer with the Huyi recurve bow. And that bow comes in weapon pack one. Crossbow also comes in weapon pack one along with the Virant 22. So weapon pack one is a pretty sweet deal. DLC. Okay, guys, I just snuck up while I was coming around the corner to this level two axis deer that is super close. So when you're aiming with the recurve, and I am taking this shot from prone because I do have the like a pro skill. Perk, I mean, it's a perk. No, I gotta do this. I'm aiming right at the end of the wood. I'm just gonna hope that this is powerful enough to go right through its body. I'm gonna take it. Splat! That was perfect, I think. I do see vital blood. So that's the nice thing with bow hunting is a lot of the time you can shoot them in the rear end and you will get a vital. Look at the crazy penetration. It went right through the entire body and out the shoulder blade. We got every organ pretty much except for the heart. Oh, and I was using the 700 grains. That might be why I am using the wrong arrows. So to understand which arrows to use with which bow, basically this is how it works. With any of the compound bows, you can use the 300 grains, which are good for classes 1 and 2. You can use the 420 grains, which are good for classes 2 to 7. These are just traditional arrows or tracer arrows. And then you can use the 600 grain traditional or tracer arrows, and they are good for classes 7 to 9. So you'll notice that there is some overlap. The 420s go up to class 7, and the 600s start at class 7. So class 7s, you could actually use the 420s or the 600 grains. So in that case, I would just use the 600. You might as well use the more powerful arrow. Then with the Huyi recurve bow or the long bow, the arrows for those are the 350 grain traditional arrows, good for classes one to three. Then the 540 grain broadhead traditional or tracer arrows, which are good for classes four to seven. And then we have the 700 grain broadhead traditional or tracer arrows. We have them both here. And those are good for classes eight and nine. So with these, they're 
is no overlap, which is very interesting. And then interestingly, with the newest bow to come to the game, which is the Senberg Takedown Recurve Bow, because this bow, even though it is a recurve bow, you can use any bow scope on it. It takes the same arrows as a compound bow, which would be the 300, the 420s, and the 600 grain arrows. And the crossbow takes bolts. So the crossbow takes the 300 grain bolts, the 420 grain bolts, and the 600 grain bolts. Just load all your arrows in, and when you highlight them, it'll tell you the recommended class down there. Just make sure you have the right arrow in before you sneak up to your target. Okay, so I just moved over here to Emerald Coast. I thought we would take down a saltwater croc, and now we are using the new Stenberg Takedown Recurve Bow that comes in the new Ambusher DLC. Now, this bow you can use with or without a scope, and I also thought we would try out this site here, and this is the Brightside Rangefinder Bow Site. And a quick edit to the video. Unfortunately, the Brightside Rangefinder Bow Site is not working in-game, but when it does work, what it does is it measures the distance and zeros perfectly for your bow, making bow hunting so much easier. It does come in the high-tech hunting pack. So when it does get fixed, I do highly recommend it, but we're gonna use a single pin sight instead right now. So with the Stenberg Takedown Recurve Bow, you can use it with or without a scope, which is very, very handy. So I am going to aim, this is the one pin sight. This is non-DLC. I definitely got her. I think I got two vitals. Little weird. So that's our first shot. Look at the penetration, came right out its head. And with the second shot, again, right through the body. So that was a 25 meter shot. And that's the new Stenberg takedown recurve bow. So it's basically a recurve bow and a compound bow all in one. So then we have the Alexander Longbow, which comes with the Silver Ridge Peaks DLC. So the Alexander Longbow actually works very similarly to this bow right here, the Hoot Yi recurve bow and uses the same arrows. Then we also have the Bear Claw Light CB60. This is another non-DLC bow and this one has a 60 pound draw weight and this is the bow that you get in the high-tech hunting pack. It has a 65 pound draw weight and the Stenberg takedown recurve bow has a 50 pound draw weight. So right now I either use the bright side single pin sight and I also really like to use the five pin sight as well. Now the crossbow has its very own sight so you have to use that one but there you have it. That's all there is to bow hunting. The key phrase for today's video is bows rule. Thank you guys so much for watching.